Hello, here's a Helm story for Rosh Hashanah, adapted from Isaac Besheva Singer's Stories for Children. Often the people of Helm decided to make New Year's, revolu- New Year's resolutions. You can imagine how silly these were. However, one year there was a resolution so infamous, so ridiculous, so memorable, that the people of Helm, however eventful their lives, were discussing it for years to come. One day, as the elders of Helm were sitting around their table discussing how on earth they could balance their budget, the richest man in Helm, Zalman Tippish, walked in. Now the elders looked up at him in surprise, because Zalman was never known to visit of his own volition. If he visited, they knew he would refuse all of their requests for taxes and donations and charity. This time, however, he thudded a heavy bag of gold right on the table in front of them. All the elders stared. There lay the solution to all their problems. Good morning, they said eagerly. Good morning, said Thalman. I'm seeking some advice on how to fulfill my New Year's resolution. If you can help me, I will pay to the treasury 2,000 gold pieces. What do you need? asked Gimple, the great fool, their leader. Well, I just turned 80. And of course, no man lives forever. But I am so enjoying life, so enjoying my bagels with sour cream and my toast with jam and my honey cakes, and my matzo ball soup, and my long pipe afterwards. I wish to live forever. Well, that's impossible, said the elders. No man can live forever. Not even Solomon. Not even Adam. All of them died. Yes, but there must be a way, said Solomon, and he shuffled the bag on the table to make it clink. You, in all your great wisdom, must be able to think of something. The elders murmured to each other, but they had no idea. Gimple sighed. I am sorry. We all know that Helm is the wisest city in the world, and I am the wisest person in it, and yet I cannot think of a solution. I can, Schlemiel piped up from the corner. He had been sitting to wait and ask if he could get a small loan for his family, because, once again, he had not taken in any work, and he and his wife had very little at home. You can? asked Gimple. Oh, yes, said Schlemiel. I was thinking about it just the other day. You see, I was reading the records of the suburbs of Helm, and I turned to the one where I live, called Delfunka. Ah, yes, that's where all the beggars live, said Gimple the Great Fool, and those who are our poorest people. Exactly, said Schlemiel. Now, in the book, it describes how the people spent their lives, who they were, when they were born, when they died, and I read about their lives. Now, never in the town, in all the town's records, in the suburb of Delfunka, never did a rich man die there. So clearly, any rich man there will live forever. If Zalman moves there, his life is his as long as he wishes. The elders stared in shock. How had Shlemiel bested them at this great riddle? Ah, said Gimple, I see that hanging around me and the other elders in this great room full of wisdom has allowed you to absorb all of our wonderful ideas. Yes, said Schlemiel, that must be it. The elders reached for the bag, but Zolman pulled it away. I will try this, he said. Thank you. After I have lived forever, I will come, and I will indeed pay you this entire bag of gold. But we need the money now, said Gimple. Zalman considered. I will give you ten coins now, no more. Now the elders argued and whimpered and pleaded, but Zalman won the argument 
and left them only ten gold coins and took the rest away with him. He did, indeed, move to Delfunca, where he enjoyed himself for quite some time, eating his blintzes with sour cream, and his matzo ball soup, and his honey cake, and smoking his long pipe afterwards. Many times over the next five years the elders asked him for the money, and every time he told them, first let me live forever, then I will pay it. As it turned out, it seemed he was right not to pay them in advance, because one day in the sixth year he became sick and soon died. Now, of course, the elders gathered around to discuss how this had possibly come about. They couldn't think of a reason. However, when they sent for Shlemiel, he had an idea. Zalman was a rich merchant who imported exotic foods like olives and etrogs, who imported fine cloth. Now the people in the suburb could not afford such things, so he had sold very little, probably none at all, in all those five years, and he had continued eating all his expensive foods and living well. Clearly, he had blown through all his money and not replaced it with anything coming in. To live in Delfunca, one needs an extraordinary amount of money, clearly, said Shlemiel. The sages talked about it and talked about it, but in the end they could think of no better response than to save up their own money in the hopes that some day they might earn enough money to move to Delfunca and possibly live forever. 